Assalamu alaikum guys, you're listening to episode 8 of the Mind Heist podcast. In this episode we discussed Islamophobia, the origins of Islamophobia, its use in the West, and if it really is all it's cracked up to be. Enjoy this episode with me and Amin. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to get a definition actually of Islamophobia, but whatever man. Oh, I had a good one, let me see. Uh... Didn't get my stuff ready, did I? I should have got my... Oh, Islamophobia is defined as intense dislike or fear of Islam, especially as a political force, hostility or prejudice towards Muslims. Okay, that's from Wikipedia. I've got a lot of Islamophobia books. If I was more Oh, prepared, yeah, yeah, you, you did your dissertation on it. Yeah, I was trying to find it. I might have sent it to a few people. Here we go. On my okay. email. Okay, sweet. I can get it up on the phone. Um, la, 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 la. Abstract. Okay. Yeah. The Oxford Dictionary currently defines Islamophobia as the intense dislike or fear. So you've just read that. Um, well, yeah, when I wrote my thing about Islamophobia, we're sort of going into this without even saying hello. <laughs> but when I yeah, wrote my. Uh, it's natural. Yeah. When I wrote my dissertation on it, I sort of immediately argued that. Islamophobia has been around since like the dawn of Islam. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to sort of take it at that angle. So that was like my first paragraph. I did. Is that like so? That's like your hypothesis, yeah. It was my uh, well, it was my introduction, really. It was my origins of Islamophobia. I I was thinking of going even further back towards, um, you know, all the hostility towards any sort of monotheistic religion but i didn't think it would be easy to understand for any person who doesn't know the link between islam and the rest of monotheism yeah you know right Mm. Uh, um where should we start we've got contemporary yeah then i just went into contemporary usage it's quite dated now all of this stuff because this Mm. was this was according to yeah it was just saying it was during like um david cameron's uh you know, David Cameron mm. being in power and that. So that's when I wrote all of this. Anyway, yeah. let's break things down. Okay. How should we start this this big discussion on Islamophobias? Well, I mean, so you talked about the the, the definition already of yeah. uh, what it is. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Because I came when I was thinking about this topic, I came onto it to say that um, I don't really like the term. I'm kind of against the term. Uh, but now you kind of rephrased it as something that has always existed and stuff, and we can always expect it to exist, right? Yeah. So uh, that's a, maybe that's a good place to start. Like, like uh, if you're Muslim, it's kind of part of our belief that you know people are going to oppose us, and people will uh, disagree with us, and they they won't believe, and in fact, the majority won't won't believe, right? Yeah. So um, so it's kind of uh, normal. Um, the thing is, though, like recently. This word has been invented, isn't it? Like Islamophobia didn't exist uh, maybe 20 years ago, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. I've, I had a bit of um, discourse about when the actual word came out. Mm. Um, if I can find it. Uh, I'm really unprepared, aren't I? <laughs> let me see, let me see. No, let just let see. it flow, man. It's Here fine. we go. So... It's not the first time this term has been used, nor is it the original definition of the term. Uh, Allen, 2010, highlights that the origin of this term is debated, spanning from the American publications of 1991 to the mm. works of Dine and Ibrahim, titled mm. L'Orient vu de l'Occident, in 1925. Um, okay, 1925. So, and there's also like this terminology of it being used during the... Um, I think it was the Iranian Revolution, where a lot of... Uh, Iranian women were scared of Islam, Islam or aspects of Islam like forced hijab right. and forced veil mm. and it came up yeah. around there so it has sort of been in discourse so for a long uh, time 1979 yeah okay so that, that's interesting so what, what because one of the reasons that I uh, don't really like using the term so much is because I realize its relation to homophobia okay it's the same structural uh, uh, term in it a uh, way of making a word right. like the phobia at the end right right so 
because of that, I mean, you always got to, this is something I, very interesting that I, uh, I saw in one video or something from uh, Dr. Shadi al-Masri. He was saying like, uh, whoever invents the term or starts using the term, they control its uh, meaning and its use. Yeah. And you have to always be careful of uh, taking a term from one kind of culture or one kind of perspective of the world and then applying it to another one, you know, because there's always things that won't translate. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Uh, and so I was thinking this Islamophobia, it, uh, it's not uh, just as clear as the definition we read. It's more like... Um, this idea that uh, minorities are uh, protecting minorities, uh, so including Muslims in the West and including uh, gay people, all of that, it's all under the same umbrella. It's yeah. kind of a, the perspective is a, a kind of democratic, liberal kind of perspective, right? Yeah. But at the same time, like that, it's a bit of a tangent, but that leads me on to like how we navigate ourselves as Muslims in a professional environment. So mm. like in my current job role, I've had to be, I'm one of probably the only Muslim or one of very, very, very few, you know, I haven't seen, maybe I've seen one. Either way, mm. when it comes to like explaining my, you know, my, my the fundamentals I have to carry out, like the prayer and the fasting and things like that and making yeah. my supervisors in like aware of that i i've had this thing in my head where i'm like well i can't really be dismissed of any of these things because it falls under the equality you know uh ethnic mm. minority bme um yeah. lg what's it called lg uh, what the... that, yeah so it, <laughs> it falls it falls under all of that and because yeah. of that you take you use it and take take it to your advantage because yeah that's the thing with a lot of it now is it's either everything's permissible or nothing is in a sense in, mm, in terms yeah. of uh, so that's the two worlds you can live in you can either live in a world where you know it is right wing and it is very this is what we do here and there isn't really much room for for any sort of tolerance and then there's the other side of the spectrum where almost everything seems tolerated and you can you know with enough voices anything can be fine and normal and pushed in society yeah so this is the part of the package isn't it yeah so one side of it is that you can kind of uh, uh claim like by law that you have rights to do whatever your religion teaches you yeah to an extent of course and then just how that you have that right other people have the right to do things that are completely against what you believe so yeah Exactly. That's, uh, that's the uh, that's part of the package of really democracy in the end. Or yeah, and then you, you've got the the Muslim dilemma of, well, a Muslim is seen to have his rights fulfilled, so they'll say, well, Mister Muslim, you know, Mister mm. Ahmed or Muhammad, you're allowed to pray. Why don't yeah. you want to, you know, I don't know, go into the Christmas meal with us, or Mister Muslim, yeah. you're allowed to pray. Why have you got a problem with? gay marriage you know whatever something like yeah. that so you you will have that and people can't so then understand. it seems like you, it seems like you're hypocritical isn't it yeah it seems like you're taking advantage of you know liberty and freedom but then it, like yeah but not for others but not for others exactly and it's a weird line because the only line the only person who can draw that line is us you know islam mm. is the is the ideology that draws that line and we can't mm. have other people draw that line for us so it is a very difficult, difficult thing to navigate. But let's get back yeah. onto Islamophobia because that was yeah. a bit of a. Um, so, would you agree with the statement that the fear mongering and that kind of thing is a cycle that leads people to uh, extremism, which in turn creates more fear? So the the, the fear mongering so of, leads yeah, to what? Ex, it leads to extremism. So, like, yeah. it marginalizes marginalizes people or marginalizes Muslims, young Muslims that feel yeah. like everyone's against them, which then pushes them towards extremism, which might yeah. mean that they, you know, do illegal activities, and then it re yeah. reinforces the fear. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Yeah, um, actually, something interesting I heard from uh, Doctor what's his name, Jordan Peterson. He said, in history, the people that have carried out genocide have always been have always identified as victims right okay? yeah so that that's the mad thing so if if uh, if you're uh, so if this media image is put out that 
uh, Muslims are dangerous and uh, you know they need to be kind of uh, tracked and like clamped down on and all this stuff yeah mm. um, and then because of that uh, Muslims feel like victims then now Muslims are more likely to carry out these kind of acts you know crimes or whatever yeah you know? so that's quite mad and but the thing is like obviously it's, it's, it's obvious that certain people are benefit from that cycle um, and it's it's been it's the same exact thing has been done um, previously, like in the 70s, 80s, with the war on drugs in the U.S. Um, and also uh, uh, in the U.S. with the uh, the whole anti-communist thing, anti-USSR, uh, and all that. Right. Uh, the exact same thing was done, um, and so that is something that is in common. Um, however. Uh, I guess what happened with the communist thing is it kind of died out and so there's no need for that war on communism anymore and in terms of war on drugs um, I guess all the governments in like Central and South America were changed and so they didn't need the war on drugs so it's a bit calmed down now yeah um, as for Islam like Islam is the, still the, the one that's in question now the boogeyman uh, but but anyway to, to yeah it's, it's, it's the current uh, boogeyman still uh, but to, to bring it back to what you said, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I agree that that cycle exists. Um, but I do, I think you know, it's up to us. I always think like you should take responsibility for for what you can do, what's in your power. Yeah. And you know, we should try and break it. So, you you mentioned it as a cycle, right? Starting from the media uh, blowing stuff up, right? So we can't control th that because they started it. But we can end it, perhaps, with the whole victim thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you think personally, when you when you mention victim, like I don't like the idea of self victimization anyway. I don't like mm. crying rivers every time something happens, or because it just, I don't know, it just it turns you into a individual that's always playing, you know, weak and and always yeah, crying. And every, yeah, yeah. So it's it's about taking control of your own narrative and and also like not having to create. Um, not a always, caricature. yeah, but not not creating a competitive media element that will. Uh, what's the way? What's that, what I'm trying to say? Um, basically, washing away what you believe in just to suit, obviously, what they want yeah. you to do. And you That's see it now, like extreme, yeah, because you've yeah. got you've got like okay, we get attacked as Muslims by right wing media all the time, right? Mm. And then you have left, you know, left media or liberal media, or whatever. Um, sort of ch trying to champion us, but only on their terms. So they'll champion yeah. us by coming up with very weird, like extreme, not extreme as in you know terrorism extreme, but extreme as in like scenario, as in like I don't know uh, a lesbian hijabi that is a rock star or something, like something crazy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, but you see it, you see it. Yeah, like, yeah, I know exactly. Okay, we're gonna have a Mus like we're gonna have a Muslim in our TV show. But this yeah. Muslim is going to be a special Muslim, not your normal Muslim. It's going to be yeah. a special Muslim that does things that no other Muslim does, and that's how we're yeah. going to champion Islam. That isn't that doesn't do anyone any favors because those people don't necessarily exist in the masses of yeah, Muslims. Exactly. You know, so it's not a good. Uh, it's not good representation. Represent exactly. It's actually just it just works for their uh, agenda, really, yeah, the, exactly. the whole li liberal agenda. Like really. I see, exactly, and it goes back to what I said. Like we can't let other people draw lines for us because that's yeah. what it is. It's 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 them sh shaping and. and Anyway, it's just crazy. So, Islamophobia, man. I don't feel oh, like. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I don't know. I, here's a good discussion to have. Have you? Would you say you've experienced anything significant in your real world day to day life? Whilst maybe not obviously where you are now, but when you were living here in the UK. Uh, it depends how you define it, right? Because look, I, I can I can actually be white if I want. Like, I don't think people would question me if I say I'm white. I mean. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Right? Um, when I, when my beard was pretty long, I guess it was pretty obvious I was Muslim, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't get. I've got never got anything uh, that is direct. Okay. But you could say I don't say this yet. But you could say that the fact that I get nervous when I'm going to an airport is yeah. Islamophobia. You could say that. Yeah. But I'd, I'm not really into that. But you could say it. But that's all I've got really. Hmm. I guess. Hmm. I, I think the male experience is different from the female one like and that's only from my own like view and what I've seen hmm. it, it, and, and you know uh, the masses do argue that that women suffer more 
Um, yeah. Because I've had, like, my wife's had, you know, I don't want to go into details, but, like, you know, altercations in the street. My mum has. Uh, my yeah. sister, I think my sister has, yeah. Me, not much that I can remember, at least not to my mm. face, you know. I had it once, but the person was, like, you know, out of their mind, probably drunk or something. But everything that happens as far as a male experience seems to be very... Well, if there's a group of them, then yeah, you'll have it. And if there's one person, mm. then it'll be behind your back or, you know, sniggering, whatever. Yeah. But rarely to the face of a man. And and when I'm on yeah. Twitter and that, I see those experiences and I see a lot of people, com- like a lot of married men are complaining that their wives have had something in the street, you know? Yeah. Um, so it is a bit, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I think maybe it is, like you said, it could be because a lot of Muslim, Muslim women... Um, quite uh, representative because they've got the hijab on or you know yeah, like the hijab of yeah, Islam. whilst a man you know isn't always unless he's wearing a thobe and a beard and a kufi because like I've got my beard's quite long now um, mm. but I don't really wear thobes out in public or whatever so yeah. I, I guess I don't really get that but, yeah, but also the, hand, yeah. the thing is yeah most of these people they probably don't want uh, they don't want to do anything they just want to maybe vent or they just want to have a, a bit of a joke or whatever yeah, they're no doing doubt. yeah yeah so they don't they're not serious enough about it to get into a real confrontation about it yeah right? so of course they're not going to do it to a man because the men uh, are more intimidating they would rather just it's imagine it's like they're just trying to get these vent they're trying to vent yeah, and they no just doubt. want to vent in a way where there's no chance of them getting in trouble, and so they do it to women because women are less, con- you know, they're less confrontational. You mm, know? Mm. So that's probably why. Um, yeah, it's not easy though, is it? I guess uh, I don't. Well, that's the thing. When you unplug yourself from the media and a lot of that, because I don't really mm. see it as much anymore. But that could just be my experience. Like, yeah, you've got the whole double standard thing, but that's such an old. Uh, discourse well, now standard? like okay so you've got recently the Las Vegas shooting and they didn't label it as terrorism but then you have something else and they'll label it as ter- terrorism yeah. and mm. and I'm so tired of talking like I wrote the whole dissertation was sort of about that right. and, and because nothing's changed I'm just tired of it and I don't see the point mm. of just trying to get them yeah. to change how they draw their lines like I don't really yeah, it's this not- is the thing, man. This is what I've made, honestly, multiple videos with a similar message in them, saying basically, look, Muslims, we in Muslims, yeah, we know we have enemies. Yeah? yeah, most people in the world are not Muslim, and uh, for w- one reason or the other, they dislike Islam. Whether they hate Islam like proper, explicitly, or they really feel uncomfortable with it, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So these people are out there in the world. Yeah. And Allah tells us, like, you should expect it, right? The, you know, in the Quran, Allah mentions, like, the enemy, uh, what's it called? Adu Allah. He mentions the enemies of Allah, okay? So this stuff exists, and if we know our religion, we should know, like, these, this, these concepts are out there, right? Yeah. So then, once you know that, and then you see the media doing what they do, and you see people, oh, they don't call the, this guy terrorist, they call it. When you see that, it should not... Um, surprise you at all this is what i've always been shocked about is that we have enemies and the enemies are acting as enemies so why are you shocked like they're your enemies you know yeah this, yeah, this is yeah. What i never understood I, I just feel like it's uh i don't know what it is bro you probably can explain better than me because i just feel like it's a complete delusion to think that someone like any 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 media really um is going to somehow vouch for you like why would why do, why would they even do that what reason do they have to even be unbiased i know this yeah because that's the thing it is all sales isn't it and you'd be surprised that like it's not just us obviously as muslims the media do it to everybody everything every yeah. institution even the police even like you know the courts even the government like what who, who nobody's left untouched even hollywood i mean look at hollywood at the moment i know it's mm. a it's a you know it's a bit current but it is what it is isn't it the, the they're just r- ripping through anybody that they can for any gain mm. so uh yeah, it's part it's partly money but it's partly enmity as well definitely do you think an organization can be can direct enmity yeah definitely i, f- I find Bro, it difficult there, there are different because... levels of hate to islam okay yeah there's, there's the obvious level of um for example uh 
on the level of my belief okay so for example a christian christian uh, some christians or many christians it's in their belief that muslims are basically kuffar in their eyes and they're going to hell right and they're yeah. the enemies of christian so that's one level of hate then the other levels of hate for example i want to live my life in order to uh, enjoy it as much as possible and these muslims believe in holding back some of your desires and and they don't believe in this absolute enjoyment and freedom yeah. and just for that reason i hate islam so there are different levels of it now but now imagine you're working in the media and you you're not even at that level of mad hate like a maybe another someone of another religion would have yeah. you just you just love freedom and you just want to live your life and enjoy it and then you see these people that uh, believe in you know um, principles and values and uh, not not just going all out and that that will bother you like you know and so there's that level and if you work in media and you you have those kind of feelings you're going to be biased mm. you know i honestly bro i just feel it's so normal and natural and yeah it's so normal and natural and you know in in the muslim world n people don't get confused like this uh, because they have that clear distinction in their mind like we're muslims they're not muslims of course they're going to be different to us of course they're not going to be like on our side yeah. always you know, i mean it's kind of normal it's, there's only a certain like i've obviously i've realized now that there's only a certain type of person that eats up that discourse and it's someone who would have already had those feelings anyway i don't think Which i don't discourses? think as in like islamophobia hating islam like i feel right. like we're at a stage now where the people who would have disliked islam anyway mm. would accept that media narrative and the people that are more open-minded about the reality of the situation tend to shun that anyway like i'll be or they won't identify a terrorist with islam they'll just say well he's doing his thing and islam is something else because i have muslim friends rah 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 do you know what i mean like, that's what they say i mean i was sitting there with a bunch of uh, colleagues and they're all saying the same thing whether they're saying that just to my face but you know they're saying oh yeah which is you know that's the media and that's the way it is and we know islam isn't like that and blah 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 and they blow things out of proportion and this and that so that discourse is always there but i think bro let me ask you a question yeah those people those colleagues or whatever whoever they are yeah. yeah that they understand the media is biased and this and that yeah when push comes to shove are they going to uh sacrifice for muslims uh reputation or whatever yeah or would they just kind of fold and kind of go with the flow because they have a lot to lose for standing up for muslims yeah you know? but the flow this is the thing about the flow at the moment it's that the media that explicitly says islam is bad mm. is few and far between i'd argue that's my argument really? yes but islam as in islam the religion being bad yeah. what it does do though is it highlights muslims as okay. in do you understand it highlights yeah. muslims doing bad things mm. um and it takes it's a it's a huge another step to say islam is bad so at the moment yes when the when a terrorist does something or when isis do something or whatever they mm. they'll throw that up there but mm. there's never anything that says unless it's like you know when they do get someone who actually says that like tommy robinson when he came on the good morning show whatever it's called and he was you know yeah. saying this and this and this and this is the quran blah 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 piers morgan was shutting him down in the middle of the show mm. you know even though he was okay. invited so to go to that extra line i think i think what it is if anything we should worry about it's about them changing islam not necessarily diminishing it do you understand yeah so, because yeah what i don't understand is what what's the problem with people disliking islam it's not yeah i don't see it as a problem i think it's normal the, right? bro this is the main thing this is why i don't like using this word islamophobia because you're acting as though every like if everyone uh, liked Islam they'd be Muslim if they're not Muslim there's a reason they're not Muslim either they're ignorant they don't really know about it yet or they they know about it and they don't like it yeah so yeah and he accepts that many people will not like Islam like they won't agree with it you know it's like either you're a, uh, you're an Islamophobe or you're Muslim I mean yeah. uh, wait, let me rephrase that it's like either uh, the, the the general thinking is like the, there are three kind of areas right you're islamophobe or you you agree with islam but you're not muslim for some reason or you're muslim like it's just weird man like 
uh, Muslims should be confident enough to say we're Muslim because we, we believe in it and you don't you know you don't believe in it and like it doesn't why do we have to give them this term like Islamophobe like they yeah. just don't believe and that's the thing it goes back to uh, the current Muslim mindset of being way too reactionary I mean, when when remember, I mean, I don't know. If it's a while ago now, but obviously, when those artists or whatever were drawing pictures of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mm. we well, not we, as in all of us, but some of us just started rioting in the streets in certain parts of the world, yeah. you know. And it, yeah. that is just it's just beyond me. Like mm -hmm. people do that every day, and yeah, be angry about it, but be angry about it and just. What what there's nothing you need to do. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? Because and it's kind of like the double standard we were talking about before. It's like you 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 like your freedom of speech when it comes to doing da'wah in the street. Yeah, right. Yeah. But then it's, it doesn't work for yeah. you always. You it? you have to let the dogs bark, so to speak. Because if you start giving them reactions, and that's what they want, and that's what they're after. If no one gave a damn, yeah. then no one would care. You know. And yeah. I, and I'm not saying obviously, you know. I mean now, like look what they do with Isa alayhi salam and the, how he's always yeah. in jokes and the, but the end, you know, the butt of all jokes and all comedies and whatever. And there's always mm. someone dressed up as Isa alayhi salam and stuff. Yeah, there is that risk of it going to that extreme. Um, but at the same time, there's a way of giving your distaste for something without looking yeah. barbaric in doing it. You know, so I think what we need to do is to communicate uh, Islam as it is, and then. You know, people will agree or disagree with it, and then it's kind of like so be it. As long as people understand actually what Islam is, then that should be our goal. You know, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah. I think that's what Prophet Sallam came to do. He came to give the message, yeah, right. And then you accept or you don't accept. And you know, everyone knows the the Surah Al Kafirun. Lakum dinukum waliyadin. You got your thing. You got your religion and the consequences that come with that. And I have mine. And that that sort of was revealed just before the hijrah. Then he's like, okay, I gave you guys in Mecca the message. I'm going to Medina now. You know the message. You know you can come to Medina if you want to be Muslim, etc. And it's like cool. That's what I did. You know? So I wrote that something like that in my dissertation as well about mm. um, how like the shu'ara of that time mm. were like the media of today. The yeah. poet, poets. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, sorry. Yeah, the poets of that time. Uh, like the media today, so they would do, you know, say what they wanted to and say what they wanted to, and but mm. like I said, I um, I think this whole thing we can go on forever about what they do, what they do, and it should be more about our us as Muslims and how to yeah. deal with it, and definitely, really and truthfully, like hey, as an example, you don't have to go to extremes in in media to like curate in your own media, for example, to uh, prove a point. I mean, Elmfeed put up a video the other day of that. Um, that man in Kentucky who forgave his yeah I the think he was Malaysian guy yeah yeah he forgave uh, the the guy who murdered his son right he was a Muslim yeah. and yeah, and I'm that sure. video went viral and it went all over the place and I was sitting at work and um, I sort of briefly mentioned it and they were like oh yeah we saw that we saw that you yeah. know and that's all it takes like all it takes is oh share a few good and this is I'm talking about like online the online sphere. In terms of yeah. real world, then it goes without it's saying. True. Just be the yeah, be a be a good ambassador for Islam. Like that's what yeah. it takes, you know. Yeah. And 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 another thing as well, don't. I know there's this fine line between integration and being friends with people that you don't need to be friends with and all that stuff, but yeah. just simple interactions with people that you would never ever, you know, speak to. Is is fine. Like not every conversation with someone has to be dawa straight away, right? Yeah, for sure. Because you can't build dawa without a relationship. Sometimes you know, and that's the thing. And I sometimes dawa as well is like uh, stopping someone on the street, taking shahada. Okay, here's a book. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, and I'm talking about people that you see every day, like your local shopkeeper, or whatever. Like it's just about starting conversations. My best dawa, all the dawa I've ever done, has never been. Mm. I don't unless I was at a uni or whatever doing some sort of event it's never been like in the street stopping random people because personally I don't think it's effective I don't I don't you know yeah. I'm more about the well the guy that I've known for years mm. I'll just talk to him about what I'm up to and when he asks me the question I'll start the conversation from there 
because everyone yeah. seems to ask you a question. Everyone asks you a question about Dean, you know, and it's about not being afraid to practice. Like I'll be praying yeah, in fun. the middle of wherever, in the middle of a park, or in the middle of work, or in the middle of a, a you know, a, a training session or whatever I'm doing. Yeah. And whoever I'm with, if they're non-Muslim, they'll ask me, "Oh, yeah, you do that. So you do that five times a day, then?" Well, because they're trying to get in with you and understand you. Well, this is the thing: people are thirsty for Islam. Yeah, they're hungry for Islam. They're curious, but I think a lot of them they like the look of it, mm. right? So if you can, all you have to do is actually act on it uh, and not be like uh, an yeah. idiot to people, and yeah. people are going to be loving it and give them something to look at. Don't be shy about it. Like a lot of yeah. Muslims are completely shy about it. Like if they want to go and pray, instead of mm. telling you know whoever they're with, oh, I have to go and pray now, they'll say you know I need to go to the toilet or I'll be back in five minutes or just mm. be transparent about your religion yeah. because if you're if you're not proud of it, then you're not really practicing it properly, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's not. I mean, uh, you know, it's part of the the was it condition, conditions of of the shahada. To have absolute conviction, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah. So and if you have the conviction, you're going to act like it. It's yeah. It goes in and and added on top of that is the a lot of Muslims have this uh, obviously conflict in their head that they're not good enough. They're not good enough mm. Muslims, so they're not good enough to speak about it. So they're not good enough to tell anyone about it. It's and it's it's just a stupid cycle, and it's just shaitan messing with you. No matter how much you're sinning, yeah. how bad things are going. Mm. It's you know the fact that you can say la ilaha illallah. That's enough. That's enough of a sentence to explain to someone if they don't want to ask you what that means. Yeah, yeah. and you know you can always you know we always say oh Muslims do this but Islam says this right we always yeah. do that yeah yeah so you can do that equally like if you if you know you're doing something bad uh, and then you can still explain to your non-Muslims around you like. Or, you know, for example, yeah, you smoke, Methelen. Uh -huh. You can say, oh, you know, in Islam, we shouldn't harm ourselves, we shouldn't harm our health. You know, I do it, you know, I, I don't really want to be doing it, but I'm doing it. It's still like Dawah, you're still telling them in Islam, you know, we, we should look after our health and stuff. Yeah. That's the message. They yeah. understand the difference, you know, as long as you're a human in front of them. Exactly. They understand. Exactly. It's, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a lot of weakness, I suppose, and a lot of fear and a fear to stand out I mean I, I, when I go to London I feel like people up in London and Birmingham have it easy like when you go mm. down south it's not as prevalent I, yeah. in, especially in between like so I'm in Brighton in between Brighton and London you've got a lot of uh, small village towns and, and I've been going to quite a few of those uh, these past weeks and mm. you know I stick out like a sore thumb but right. I feel like I experienced less uh, looks and racism and whatever from those areas than I do from bigger cities reason oh. being yeah I, I, reason being I, I, my theory anyway is that people who uh, cities that have an overpopulation or like a large population of Muslims the the racists in those cities are sick of seeing Muslims every day and right. sick of Muslim behaviour whilst when you go to when you're the only Muslim in a village mm. they don't because you're not you know you're sort of a, a phenomenon and a you know a rarity you're not yeah. really treated badly and like get out and all this stuff. You're just treated like, oh, mm. you know, tell me a bit about yourself. I don't really know, blah, blah, blah. Or you might be like yeah. a bit, you might give off some fear maybe. They might be a bit scared of you and they won't say anything to you. But mm. it's so a lot of it is to do with, uh, you know, Islamophobia isn't necessarily just Islam. It's, you know, things that are to do with immigration and, uh, yeah, you know, linked in, with, linked in with the, a whole wealth of yeah, things loads of different phenomena that are going on at the same time and that, that's what I was going to say if I if I'm a you know East Londoner white guy okay yeah. Cockney original Londoner yeah um, and I you know you know like uh, the East End of London used to be originally it was Jews then it was Irish people now it's like Bengalis okay yeah so uh, originally uh, so uh, and before that I was a Cockney or at some point Cockney was there yeah? so imagine I'm Cockney guy. I go through uh, Whitechapel, whatever East London, and I see yeah. how dirty it is, and I see all these signs with uh, in in Bangla and stuff. Yeah, am yeah. I gonna be? Is, am I gonna like have a positive feeling towards Muslims or not? So yeah. that's another thing. It's like we're saying, isn't it? Like take responsibility responsibility for as much as possible. You know, yeah. and yeah. so that guy that goes through East London and sees it's dirty 
and then simultaneously sees that loads of Muslims are living there. Yeah. Is is he an Islamophobe now yeah. for for having this negative uh, impression of Muslims? Yeah, I I Come that on. that narrative is so you know resonant with me because I've that happened to me when I started going to London for the first few times, and it, this was like when I first started joining Twitter and, and talking to people, you know, talking to other Muslims because, like I said, down south there wasn't that many. So anyway, I went to to London to meet some of the brothers and. They were always, they would, they were literally the the areas they lived in were like that, like you described. And to me, I got that vibe because that's not what I'm used to. I'm used to down south, everything's clean, everything's new, everything's shiny, you know. Mm. And then my impression of London was quite distasteful because of the areas I visited. And I was like, well, it's like I've gone to, it's like I've gone to the <laughs> the villages of Tunisia, like I said in the previous episode, yeah. how it was all dirty and dusty and whatever. Like that's yeah. what it reminded me of. But you know, that's not always going to be the peop- the fault of the people. A lot of it is the fault of the councils and the funding and the. Well, bro, we can always do that though. So yeah, um, the, if I was in victim mode, what would I say? I would say, well, uh, people in East London, originally from Bangladesh, Bangladesh was colonized, and so they weren't educated. So yeah. they came to the UK uneducated. So they're dirty because they're not cultured people. I could blame it on on the UK. I could yeah, do that. Yeah, 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 but yeah. what what good is that going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do we want to make progress, or do we want to, do we want to like find someone to blame? You know, which one do you want? <laughs> yeah, this I got a question for you, bro. Go on then. Was Abu Lahab, for example, was he an Islamophobe? Oh God! What <laughs> it depends on the definition, now, doesn't it? Um, I don't. I guess so, but it depends. It's not. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like this is a trick question. <laughs> it is kind of. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. Okay. So, what, do you think the average like Muslim in the UK would say the same? Or no, because no one's made that link. I find it. No, uh, it's a rarity. Like when I wrote in my dissertation, I felt like I discovered something amazing. Because I was mm. like, wait a sec, Islamophobia has been around since the dawn of time. Like it's not this new phenomenon, and right. that's what I wanted to sent to them like in a, in a message I was like this right, is it I got you yeah so this is your time bro this is my time to shine yeah <laughs> yeah so you so he is yeah <laughs> yeah I guess so yeah mm. thing is though like I think it's always important it's actually extremely important if you're not speaking Arabic especially to try and always refer stuff to the language used by Allah and by of the course. Prophet yeah. yeah and so it's, well, think about Allah it like doesn't this. really refer to the the kuffar as fearing Muslims or yeah yeah yeah. But know, it's, it's like it's, yeah. here's here's an example. What we could say, mm. what does Islam mean? And it really mm. does narrow down to submission. And if he's scared of submitting or scared of submission, then it sort of works, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> Maybe. 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 I, but I uh, no, but I mean, but the, I'm talking about the phobia part. Yeah, the fear yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't. That doesn't. Re- that narrative doesn't really exist. Like in the Quran, right? Allah has Allah says there's Muslims, there's Munafiqeen, there's Kuffar. Then within the Kuffar, there's like Ahl al Kitab, there's the the Imat al Kufr. You know, there's the leaders yeah. of the Kufr, right? There's the uh, there's the enemies of Allah, but there's nowhere here is talking about people that fear Muslims or whatever, right? So I mean, these people that are, uh, that might be called Islamophobes. They're just not Muslim, and uh, they have negative feelings towards Islam or Muslims mm-hmm. or whatever. It's all mumbled up in their head, probably. Yeah. And uh, you know, as a Muslim, it's to be expected, I think. And mm-hmm. so it's like Abu Abu Lahab. He he uh, had a big problem with Islam, and uh, you know, we, what do we call him? He's just a kafir, yeah. I don't know. That's the thing. A lot of these books that I had uh, that mm-hmm. you know are Islam, you know, about Islamophobia weren't even written by Muslims. Yeah. yeah. So. It is sort of, um, you know, who called the Christians Christians kind of thing. It wasn't mm. Isa Ali Salam, was it? It was the enemies, so to speak. Not saying yeah. that these people are the enemies, but I'm saying sometimes the labels come from the most far-reaching places and never the people themselves. Yeah. And, and and that's you've got you've yeah. got okay. Think about it this way. I mean, you've got people who are against Jews and Judaism are generally mm. anti-Semitic or the anti-Semite. You mm. know, and but Arabs are also Semites. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> so it's a bit, yeah. So it's, this is the mad thing, bro. It's but, like how the word is used is mad. Yeah, but why is it? Why is it not? You know, judophobia. Yeah. Do you understand? Uh, 
well, I, that's another discussion for another day. But it just goes to show, like, certain things are used while other things aren't, and it's a bit, it's a bit of a coin flip, whatever it lands on. Yeah, I mean, you just got, you got to sometimes you just got to sit for five minutes and think about the words you're using and where they come from and why you use them in those contexts and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. Then gives you a bit of clarity, maybe. I wanted to share a. Uh, because whenever I talk about this topic, uh, I always uh, refer to the to this uh, story in the time of the Prophet Salam, when I believe it was uh, the Sahabi uh, Khabbab, uh, what's his name? Khabbab uh, bin Al Arit, something like that. I will right. be a long line. Okay, so he comes to the Prophet Salam. This is in Mecca. And, uh, you know, in Mecca, things were very hard for the Muslims, you know, uh, all the, the mushrikeen were like, they were not happy with this, uh, this uh, new lifestyle, if you like. And, uh, they, you know, you know what was happening, you know, torture and, and some were killed, etc. Yep. Uh, and the, the uh, siege kind of thing as well. Uh, so, well, so Khabbab, he, he comes to the Prophet, والسلام, he says, will you not, not make a dua for us? You know, will you not ask Allah to help us? Okay, and then the Prophet ﷺ, how did he reply? I mean, think about it. Like Khabab is coming, you know. I don't want to like force my interpretation on this, but it's kind of like a a victim situation. It's like, Lord, this is being done to me. Will you not ask for help? Okay, so he comes to the Prophet ﷺ. What does the Prophet ﷺ reply with? Does he um, feed into the victimhood, or does he uh, switch it and go elsewhere? Okay, what does he say? He says, Ali Sadsala, he says, before you there were people, there were Muslims, okay, that they would be uh, their skin would be pulled from their bone, okay, they'd be tortured so much because of their belief, okay, and other people would be cut in two, etc. Okay, talking about the terrible torture that would happen to these Muslims that that were before them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So straight away he's he's given Khabbab a, a, an example of people worse off than him. Okay, and he said, and these people, they didn't turn away from their deen. Okay, so he said, this terrible, much worse than what's happening to you right now happened to these people, and they did not, they did not turn away from, uh, from, from their, their deen. Yeah. Yeah. Then he says, uh, he says, Wallahi, la yutimanna had al amr. This, uh, this uh, religion, it will be completed. Okay, until. Uh, you know the famous uh, hadith about until you you'll be able to go uh, from Hadramaut to Sanaa without anything to fear, yeah. Then what does he end with? Well, he says, "Walakinnakum tastajidu." But you, he's talking about the Sahab Sahaba that were feeling this way. He said, "You're hasty. You're too hasty." So uh, he came to him as a as a victim, and he went away as someone empowered and someone looking inside for how he can improve you know yeah. okay I, I need more sabr and this is in Bukhari by the way right so I love this story bro because it's like it gives you that formula of okay look inside how could I be more patient how could I give a better image of Islam how could I be a better Muslim mm. rather than uh, looking externally for help per se you know that extends doesn't it it extends way beyond this as well it's just a general mindset that everyone needs to try and achieve is yeah. to stop being the, playing the victim and um, blaming the world I guess blaming everyone else for their own problems and just yeah of, yeah it is what it it's is a, it's a mad mindset in general you know to look inside yourself and, and try and improve and stuff so uh, that's my Islamophobia hadith <laughs> <laughs> yeah man I think obviously uh, things are changing I mean I don't know how much media and stuff is taken um, you know like I'm talking about TV and newspapers like the generation changes now everything's on the internet mm. uh, people post things viral videos sort of yeah, democratised yeah, I mean. yeah so things aren't really as clear cut um, and there's everything like now everything's available everything you want everything is yeah. just there um, so you can be exposed to anything and it would just shift your mind and yeah, it's just a bit crazy. It's just it's not what it used to be anyway. So I don't know. Will it is it sustainable? I don't think so. I mean, even you know, even when you look at the political side of things, and you've got Donald Trump in as the president, and his you know openly Islamophobic 
in quotations, you know, mm. his rhetoric and stuff. And it's just like, well, everyone's laughing at him anyway. So how much of what he says does it really mean? Yes, when it comes to policy and things that changes people's lives, then, yeah, we we can be worried and we can try and sort of combat that through legislation and through petitioning and whatever. Like, you know, when it came to the flight bans and, um, you know, stuff that actually affects people's lives. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, there is a there is that side of things where there is an ugly side where you know hijabis women whatever they are getting attacked and physically mm. you know and, and yeah. that is something to worry about and it is something to combat um, is it as prevalent as maybe it's made out to be I don't know you know because you know you're, you're probably more likely to get hit by a car or do you understand what I'm trying to say like yeah, the, the statistics think... are always skewed a bit so yeah. Yeah, like, well, you know when this whole acid attack thing was happening? Yeah. I think I did a story on Snapchat or something about, like, it's, bro, it's really dangerous to get in a car. Like, it's way more dangerous to get in a car. Like, it's yeah. way, you're maybe way more likely to get in a car crash than to get acid thrown on you or to be attacked because you're Muslim. Of course. Like, it's mad. It's actually very safe in many countries, you know, where they land. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, like, it's it's a... Like obviously, bro, Donald Trump, he got elected. Like people voted for him. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, but again, I don't know, man. I just, I just can't help thinking that, like people in America, they have the right to a preference, you know. And if they don't want Muslims in their country, that's their preference. And mm. if they can vote that uh, into happening, then that's how their country works in the end. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I try and put myself in uh, other people's shoes, right? Imagine like loads of flipping I mean there are quite a few Chinese people coming into Algeria now okay to do uh -huh. work and stuff like that I'm just thinking like imagine like loads of them came and to the level where you know maybe Islam was becoming a lower and lower lower percentage of the country's population and right you know like well, how would I feel like people don't like change usually in general and then when your whole like culture is changing and yeah. you feel like you're losing power like but uh, that's know, the thing. Whether those okay for that example, like it may be that those Chinese people, for example, they're coming to work and then they're leaving. You know, um, once they're settled there, they've effectively become Algerian. Like their kids are now Algerian. And do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, and then it affects those kids' life. Because when I, was, I think of America, I think of all those people on Twitter that I'm friends with yeah. that are there, sort of, you know, feeling the brunt of the consequences of that kind of. You know, especially when they're living in the you know in the south and whatever. Yeah, bro, it's not nice. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. It's not nice. Um, I'm just saying that people people will have their preference of how they want the country to be. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. pretty much. That's what I'm trying to say is that people will have their thing. And it honestly, I don't think it's racist. I don't think it's hateful. They simply want the country to kind of be the way it was, or they want, they want it to be more comfortable for them like because they're more comfortable people that look like them and think like them mm. now you could argue that a truly cultured and developed person is will be able to live with people different to them in harmony yeah you could say that um that's that you could say as valid but it's like these people obviously maybe they haven't developed that far or whatever and you know you gotta ask yourself the question as well how how much can you live in harmony with others that are different as well yeah, then it goes back to what you were saying, like, oh, we will uh, accommodate for you, but you won't accommodate for anyone else. <laughs> mm. And it's true, like, we will fight, we will, you know, we will shout as loud as we can to build a mosque in an area, right? Mm. Yeah. But we, and like, in our countries, we wouldn't do anything for anyone else. Mm. Do you understand? <laughs> like, no, yeah. you see what I mean? In, in this, okay, mm. we, we, we demand a mosque in the UK, right? Yeah. Um, try and get like a I don't know a, a Sikh temple built in Algeria or something oh yeah um, you exactly. yeah exactly I guess it's like the UK has claimed for a long time that it's you know a dem democratic country and that there are certain rights that they want to give to everyone and it's based on that that people demand stuff isn't it yeah um, and it's, it's difficult right? like it's a yeah, dilemma sure. we can't well, that's the thing like if we're going to keep denying it we're going to keep denying it when they mm. complain about these things sometimes there's you know hints of truth because we can't we can't the, the lines are drawn and they're rigid for us right and mm. 
we are taking advantage of the the liberties that we have here. It's just right. that's just the way it is. Mm. Are we going to implement those liberties in our own idea, you know, ideological Muslim countries? Probably not, you know, because mm. it's not how things work. So yes, yeah. we have to hold our hands up and say, well, this is your country, this is democracy, this is what you want. Yeah. And we're going to play by your rules to get what we want as well. Yeah, but, that's a fair way of saying it really. Yeah. I think being honest about it is better, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that's the thing, yeah. And and it's like I'm going to be a good citizen in terms of you know the the general stuff like everyone can agree on like keeping the streets clean and yeah. helping out if there's yeah. uh, I don't know cr crime and all this type of stuff in it like you yeah, know you're right. you can agree on most things in the end yeah and that's um, the thing yeah like that's what the only thing we can do is sort of fluff it up I guess and, and be the best we can be and, and <laughs> no it is it is I'm trying <laughs> to be <laughs> yeah, exactly just be the best people that you can be like do good for people uh um, and just and there's, there's little things that people just don't think about um, mm. the smallest of things like always play on my mind like uh, I'm trying to give you an example now but you know stuff like driving at the correct speed limit or mm. being a sensible driver or parking correctly or not parking illegally or um, yeah. I know these are all with driving but similar sort of low level things that we just brush to the side at the end of the day you're a Muslim committing that and in the eyes of other people you're, you know, yours is worse your sin is worse in the eyes of other people because you're Muslim and you're representing and that goes with that goes in front of Muslims uh, it goes in front of non-Muslims and it goes in front of Muslims you know as a practice yeah. in Muslim your sin is always worse in the eyes of people isn't it because so what would you say to someone that says I'm fed up of having to to you know, uh, kind of be better than the average person because I'm Muslim and I have to give this good impression. I say to them that Allah put you in a position where you could probably earn more deeds because of that, because Allah has made you a representative. You know, mm. you know, the yeah. pressure is a is a test from Allah because you're practicing now. Allah is testing you more, and part of that test is to be better. Allah is, is essentially, without you even knowing, pushing you to do more. The fear mm. of hypocrisy, the fear of failure, and the fear of hypocrisy should always push someone to do more. I used to say that on Twitter, people listen to music, right? Muslims listen to music. Okay. And, and they would never like to share a hadith about music and how bad it is. Right. Because they feel like they're being a hypocrite. Okay? Mm. And I would say to them, share that hadith because the fear of hypocrisy is often worse than uh, the fear of you listening to music and what, what results from that. Mm, being a hypocrite yeah. is such a big deal in some people's heads like when we goes back to what we were saying earlier about uh, non-practicing people giving dawah because they don't want to be a hypocrite that fear of hypocrisy for some reason mm. is is huge in our in our whole uh, culture well, I think p hypocrisy in the English language and nifaq is not exactly the same no no of course yeah, yeah and that's what that's I mean I'm, 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 I'm essentially I'm talking about the, the English or the western interpretation of being a hypocrite you know and yeah. it's true like it is a big deal to to a lot of people but yeah that's what it is i i used to say to myself like if i'm struggling with something or i've done a particular sin straight away i'll tell everyone not to do that sin because that will put me off doing it because i'll think well i've just told everyone mm. not to do it yeah. so you put yourself in a position to yeah. do good box myself do... in box yeah. myself in and then yeah 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 anyway. in the end like it's a privilege to be a muslim so if you don't want this privilege just because people are uh, you know you have to kind of show more good openly mm. Mm. if that's if that's like such a big deal for you it w outweighs being muslim then uh i don't know maybe you need to learn more about islam yeah. to value it i don't know people, people are weak with it as well and that's what irritates me the most like i i i don't it's shame people don't have a lot of shame like yeah okay you're a bad muslim or whatever there's no need to flaunt that or to put that out there or you're struggling with your deen in this particular time. You know, if you know what's halal and haram, there's no point mm. putting your haram out there for everyone to see. You know? Yeah. This is and a whole other podcast, isn't it? It is a episode. whole other podcast. And I would love to do that podcast with you. Inshallah, and it is, we and will. It's just, it, it's bugging me to death because there are yeah. people that, and I, I'll go back to Twitter because that's where I see Muslims now. I don't see any Muslims anymore because I'm so <laughs> tied up in my own life. But yeah, and, and, and it, it is what it is. Like, you, you, you see Muslims that were practicing one day 
and they might still be practicing now, but they're just they've got low man, and you can mm. see when someone has low man because of what they're posting and what they're sharing and what they're liking, mm. and then it's and then on the other flip side, oh look at what the West are doing to us and Islamophobia and blah blah blah. Nah, man, just stand on your two feet, you know, keep your mm. sins private, and just be a better person, be better than everyone else. Mm. The theme that's coming through a lot of what we're saying is like ikhlas, I think. Like, if you're genuine about uh, wanting to be a, uh, pleasing Allah, basically, if you're genuine about pleasing Allah, then um, a lot of this stuff um, it won't bother you as much. Like, you're trying to be a good Muslim, whether there are Islamophobes or not. Right? Yeah. Whether people are picking on you every little bad thing you do or not, you want to be a good person anyway, right? You exactly. want to please Allah anyway, right? Exactly. So if you're if you're genuine with Allah, then your behavior actually should be similar. Yeah. You know, like you won't you won't litter for for because you know Allah doesn't like it. Before you don't litter because Johnny's going to think Islam yeah, is bad. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And and it goes back to that whole thing of like looking inside, in it, and like yeah. if you like because a lot of the stuff that you're you're pointing out, like uh, driving properly and following the rules and all of that, people might say it, it's it's not a big deal, it doesn't make any difference, mm. right? But in front of Allah, every deed is good, in it. It's like yeah. every good intention you have to to do these things. So if it's for Allah, it's not a small thing; it's a big yeah. thing. I, I I'm gonna I have to go soon, but I just want to say in, on top of that, mm. the the it goes like I was thinking of this the other day, like you know when you're crossing the road at a, a traffic light, yeah, and you cross the it's a red light. There's you know it's a red light for you for the pedestrian, but you still mm. cross anyway, right? Yeah. But when there's when there's a uh, like a mother and her child there mm. waiting as well, mm. I tend to not cross. Because I wait for the green man, just so that kid knows how to do it properly and doesn't oh, see okay. me and gets led. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And it goes yeah. to—it's the same sort of thing that I'm trying to say. Like sometimes mm. just doing something correctly and how it should be done in front of someone else is enough to change them and enough to give them an impression about you. Yeah. yeah. So I've just got one question for you, bro. Because for you're it. in the UK and stuff. You know, around this whole Islamophobia thing, some people react by uh, blaming those people that can be blamed. Some people react by, you know, tr trying to campaign for, for example, policy to be harsher against uh -huh. uh, hate crimes and all that. Yeah. Um, I know Sheikh Haytham's thing that he's been pushing is like, uh, be confident that you're British and you des you belong here, like you deserve your citizenship and your rights just as much as non-Muslims, right? Yeah. And you should, and be, and when you have that mindset of confidence and yes, this is our country as well, it will make you work to build the country, right? Yeah. So it's not it's not a a PR stunt, it's not a marketing uh, gimmick uh, that you're cleaning up your neighbourhood so the news see that Muslims are doing it. No, like you're, it's your neighbourhood, so you want to clean it up. Yeah. Because because that's what you know it's a good it's a good thing to do and because you want to develop this country and you're Muslim and Muslims are part of the fabric of the UK. Yeah. So do you do you agree with that high, like kind of narrative or? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because when we know the other the other episode when we were talking about um, uh, living in the East and all of that and how like you yeah. never feel like you belong anywhere. Mm. If you've still got that mindset, really and truthfully, that. You know, at least me. If I still got that mindset that oh no, I'm Tunisian or I'm Moroccan or do you understand? Yeah. Then yeah. I'm just fooling myself, really, because I wouldn't last a second out there in North Africa. <laughs> it's it's true. It's true. Okay. I was born here. I was raised here. I can go there and you know maybe mingle in that. Give me a piece yeah. of paper and I'm stuck. Like tell me to do anything official. Tell me to do some paperwork. Tell me to start a business. Tell me to raise a family. I'm stuck because mm. I don't have that. I don't. I'm not. You know. So. Yeah, essentially, yeah, I am British and whatever. And at the end of the day, mm. Islam is for the world. And if if Britain wants Islam, they can have it if they want it. Yeah, do you understand? Yeah. Like that's the way we should think about it. I'm not saying I'm oh. forcing the deen on anyone's throat, but I see I treasure Islam as a gift, as a as a gift from Allah, and a gift that's worth giving to the world. And if mm. my neighbor or my whatever, my colleague or my mm. supervisor, or whatever, wants Islam, they can have yeah. Islam. And then, and yeah. if this whole country wants to become Muslim, then it's you know it's great Britishstan, isn't it? <laughs> like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. that's what it can be if it wants yeah. to be. Yeah, so it's, it's everyone's welcome. 
Yeah, I agree with you, man. Like, if, if you're not going to live elsewhere, you know, like I do encourage people to, but if that's just not happening for whatever reason, yeah. then commit and uh, go all in. Yeah, you know? I mean... And just how, just how you know, I know Algerians are always thinking about, oh, this country is a mess and we need to build it up. Yeah. Like, you in, you in the UK should be thinking, okay, the NHS getting shut down, let me, let me let, what can I do about yeah, it? Yeah, of course. I mean, look, actually, Algeria, for example, wasn't a Muslim country at one time. So. Didn't, didn't have Islam. And, and you know, and who knows? Who, we don't know how long this world is going to be around for. Hmm. We don't know. Yeah. We don't, the, whole, the whole East-West thing could be flipped on its head one day. Europe could be Muslim and the Middle East could be, you know, well, apart from mm. Mecca and Medina. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, you just yeah. don't know. There's nothing set in stone to say that... Yeah. You know, we're going to be on upon what we're on forever. So, Allah so, Dina. Yeah, it's very. It's a brand new context, man. This never happened in history before. Uh, I think such huge numbers of Muslims living as minorities. You know, yeah. And yeah. so it's a whole, and even this whole globalization and mass immigration thing. It's a, it's a big new phase in the world. This whole globalization thing, and no one knows where it's going. Yeah. So, you know. Because we don't know where it's going, we should try and make it the best exactly. future. We just need to be pioneers of our own professions. Really, that's my my goal anyway. Just be the mm. best at what you do. Yeah, uh, so. and no need to chase whoever's doing something else. Do your own thing and be the best at it. Inshallah, yeah, Ihsan, chase Ihsan. Of course, uh, bro. Do you want to do uh, any comments or questions before we end it? Or? Um, well, the thing is, dinner's on the table, so that's why I have to go. <laughs> Okay. okay um, great. Let the uh, if you want, actually, if you mm. want to answer a question, you can record it when I'm gone, and um, you know, slap it on the end of this, inshallah. Or if I, I might mm. do one as well, because like, you did a whole episode on episode seven, yeah. didn't you? All on your own. Yeah. So, yeah. guys, if you like that, let's know because that might be like a plan B. If any of us are, you know, I might do the next mm. one or whatever, like mm. a quick, quick question thing. Um, mm. Yeah, actually, that might be a good idea. Because it's sometimes nice because that way you're answering the person directly to them and it's like a conversation between you and them, you know. Mm. Um, I think one uh, day, one day as yeah. well, inshallah, it's just an idea I've just had now, we could get call-ins as well. So I could get phone and mm. uh, try and hook it up somehow. I don't know how things are done. Um, I suppose yeah. we need microphones and all that stuff. But loudspeaker we shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, should be okay, inshallah. Okay, bro, let, let's leave it there then. And if we add uh, questions, we'll add them or whatever. Uh, very good uh, episode, alhamdulillah. Very good. Um, I think the, the message and the kind of ideas were kind of clear and stuff. So we don't need to summarize. Um, as usual, you can email us with your feedback or your questions or your suggestions at uh, mindheistpodcast.com. Uh, mindheistpodcast at gmail.com. Yep. What else, Muhammad? Um, you can you can follow Amin on Snapchat, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you can follow me on Aki Tweet on Twitter. Aki uh, Tweet, Google Aki Tweet. Don't Discover do that. His. No, no, no. Don't Google. No, me. don't do that. Oh, okay, don't just do Twitter. Just, just Twitter. Twitter. Don't do anything else. <laughs> Don't search my name on the internet, please. And make make dua that he that he enjoys his dinner. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.